looks like the middle abdomen is okay. Now the camera is moved towards the head of the patient and we can see the situation in the pelvis. So the head of the patient is on the bottom of the screen, the legs of the patients, patient are on the top of the screen and I'm standing on the uh, left side of the patient. And here we see again the implants in the pelvic peritoneum. Uh, the sigmoid is retracted medially and I take out the, the pelvic peritoneum. At the same time going the retroperitoneally to find the critical anatomical structures. Here you see the IP ligament close uh, to my forceps and to my uh, monopolar. I strip the peritoneum from it. and gradually going uh, deeper in the pelvis. This is the, you know, uh, stripped uh, peritoneum of the right hemidiaphragm and the uh, right uh, lateral canal and uh, right <coughs> anterior abdominal wall. I just mobilize it a bit again to open the retroperitoneum of the pelvis uh, of the pelvic side wall. Here you see the incisus muscle. And in the pelvis, it is uh, essential to find the critical structures of the pelvis. Those are the both IP ligaments, uh, both ureters on the left side and the right side. Here we see the uh, small implants close to the cecum. Oh, now I, I incise uh, the peritoneum covering the IP ligament. Uh, so that, you know, isolating the vessels of the IP ligament, the conadic vessels in this situation, those are ovarian uh, vein and ovarian artery. Here we see the uterus, the infiltrated bladder peritoneum, both ovaries. And for easier manipulation in the pelvis, we used to uh, mobilize the sigmoid, uh, dependless on uh, plant colorectal resection. I mobilize the sigmoid and uh, retract it left and right and uh, cranially on demand, depending on the uh, certain uh, surgical situation. If I want to work in the central pelvis, we retract the bowel cranially. If we want to work on the left pelvic side wall, we can retract the rectosigmoid. Uh, on the contralateral side. And now the, we grasp the uterus with double cocker forceps to check its uh, mobility and I check the situation in the pelvis. Now I'm cutting the round ligaments uh, 
of the uterus. Uh, likewise, the liver, the uterus also has <laughs> round ligaments. And now I'm seeking uh, the, you know, structures like, you know, internal iliac artery, external iliac artery in vein, and gonadic vessels, you know, ovarian vessels. Now I, I dissect uh, the ovarian vessels and I will secure them. Depending on the situation, they can be, you know, secured close to the ovaries or close to the aorta and uh, left renal vein. Here we cut the IP ligament just uh, in the pelvic brim. You see the gonadic vessels are clipped and divided. And we see the ureter. And we see the pelvic side wall uh, vascular structures. Um, It is uh, important to mobilize the ureter and mesoureter from the uh, peritoneum. From the uh, posterior leaf of the broad ligament of the liver because it, it's a part of Douglas's pouch and we will remove it. <coughs> This is the peritoneum of the bladder. So we start from the left uh, side. So detaching the left side pelvic peritoneum. Once the left side is partially done, uh, we can move to the right side, here you see the remote peritoneum. We exteriorize it from, from, from the operative field. Here we see the um, peritoneum of the posterior pelvis located on the right of the recto sigmoid. We detach it again, keeping eye over the right ureter. And once the uh, ovarian vessels are visualized, we also visualize the ureter. And now the ovarian vessels can be clipped and divided. It's okay, now we can partially, you know, do the right pelvic side wall. We see the round ligament of the uterus. We see the bladder, bladder peritoneum. Again, we, we cut the peritoneum of the right pelvic side wall. Then we will cut the round ligament and enter to the pelvic side retroperitoneum.
here we see the right curator. We open a bit uh, the pelvic the vascular spaces, find uh, the large vessels, the uterine artery, internal iliac vessels. The uterine artery will be uh, secured and cut. This is the uterine artery, the right one. It is ligated and cut. The cut end of the uterine artery is clipped as well to stop the bleeding and then we proceed downwards For ureteral dissection, we usually use uh, cold scissors, trying to avoid both uh, monopolar and bipolar cautery to avoid the thermal damage and strictures of the ureters in the postoperative period. Now we uh, strip away the peritoneum from the bladder. We see the good amount of infiltration of the vesicovaginal space, vesicovaginal fold. But it's very rare that uh, the ovarian cancer infiltrates the bladder muscle. In contrast to the diaphragm, the bladder resection is uh, not a common procedure uh, in surgery of, of ovarian cancer. Usually it's possible to strip 
the peritoneum from the bladder without any resection. Like in this situation, we apply the traction. We use the Russian forceps for, for, for uh, traction of the peritoneum. And gradually uh, strip the peritoneum from, from the bladder. Our goal is to, to achieve the anterior uh, vaginal fornix. This is why we first we, we, we deperitonealize the bladder and once uh, we, we reach uh, the bladder dome, then we detach uh, the bladder from the, the uterus down to the anterior uh, fornix. Small bleeders are also coagulated. And here we almost reach the anterior vaginal fornix. We further uh, detach the peritoneum and go a bit codat. Oh, you see the bladder peritoneum and the uh, forceps. In contrast to the ureters, the bladder, the truser is not so sensitive to thermal damage. So it's safe to perform the superficial coagulation of it. Now we can move uh, to the left. Uh, ureter and the left uh, uterine vessels. Here we see the ureter going in the ureteric canal just under the uterine vessels. Again we use the cold scissors for this uh, step. Sorry for the camera, again, this is an unedited video. It's not possible, you know, to do, to, to, to perform open unedited video, super comfortable for a viewer, because the cameraman should move, you know, back and forth, left and right. Nevertheless, sorry for, for any inconvenience. And uh, we, uh, See, you see that we mobilize the ureter, we tunnelize the ureter, trying to find the uh, uterine artery. It's here. And now once the ureter is tunnelized, we can separately, you know, uh, cut the uterine artery or cut it together with the ureteral roof. It's not important because this is not the cervical cancer. Our goal is just to, to visualize uh, the ureter and to be safe. 
uh, usually we, we prefer to, to, to mobilize uh, the ureter until it's uh, entrance into the bladder. And here I will cut the uterine artery and the ureter move together in one piece. On the right side, we did it separately. It's not the critical. The important is to, to see and to avoid the urethral damage. Here we separate enough. I think we're safe. And we're gonna perform the same uh, uh, procedure on the opposite side. The small bleeders are coagulated. We spare the ureteral sheet and ureteral vascularization, which is very important. Again, ureter is uh, very sensitive uh, for devascularization and uh, the uh, thermal damage. Even if you don't have any uh, early post-operative uh, problems, some months later or a year later, inappropriately separated ureters can cause the strictures and the, the you know partial uh, urine uh, passage uh, the, the, the problems the partial obstructions We do the same on this side. The uterine artery was um, preliminarily cut. And here we have a small portion of the uh, ureteral roof. We, you know, tunnelize the ureter and we cut the, its roof. Sting. It's good to protect the ureter prior to application of the ligature. And so finally, we will have the both ureters under our total visual control and we'll be able to safely perform retrograde hysterectomy. As for colon, it's not clear at the moment. What we're going to do, it's possible to shave away the tumor, it's possible to perform discoid resection, it's possible to perform colorectal resection, and the advice is to mobilize everything and to keep it attached to the colon and just after that decide what you want to do uh, with the colon. Anyway, it is uh, very recommended to spare the colon because uh, um, the main source of post-operative problems in those patients is the bowel. So if the shaving is possible, it's uh, of course uh, better to shave or to perform the discoid resection. If it's not possible, it's good to, uh, you can do the segmental resection. But we don't know at the moment what we're going to do. Uh, I catch uh, the 
cervix with the bullet forceps and then I cut the anterior vaginal fornix and enter the vaginal lumen. Yes, I'm in, in the vaginal lumen. The interior vaginal wall, wall is crushed by cocker clamp. Now we have everything almost mobilized, just, just having uterus attached to the vagina. We cut the vagina until we reach the branches of the uterine vessels. which are preliminarily secured, but it, it's not the case. You have to, to cut them and secure them again. So that we cut on the both sides laterally until we reach where the uterine uh, vaginal vessels. Here we see the vaginal lumen. So we put the Rogers clamps on the lateral vaginal fornix together with vessels and cut under direct vision of the ureter and, and rectum. The vagina is open. We put some betadine. And the same is done on the opposite side. Another Rogers is placed on the right fornix and the tissues are cut and then will be sutured. And so we achieve the posterior vaginal fornix. Now the vagina is closed by double figure of eight sutures on the both sides. The same on the right side, we have the vaginal and the distal uterine vessels in this clamp. And we see the uterine cervix in the bullet forceps.
the right sided vessels are suture ligated as well. And both uh, sutures are put on the small hemostat for manipulation during the next steps of the procedure. Now, <coughs> finally, we want to cut the posterior fornix and the uterosacral ligaments. I cut the posterior fornix and put the coker clamp and go into the rectovaginal space, which is vascular and I feel the rectum under my finger. I see the penomilior fascia and put the last suture on the vagina and close it. So that the vaginal part is completed. And now we have the uterus attached on the uterosacral ligaments and on the Douglas's pouch and the rectum. Now we retrogradely cut the uterosacral ligaments and go towards the mesorectum to detach as much Douglas's pouch peritoneum from the proximal rectum and to see whether we can spare the rectum in this case or not. This is the ureter. Again, I'm cutting the right uterosacral ligament going towards the rectum, towards the mesorectal fascia. And so that detaching the Douglas's pouch peritoneum from the proximal rectum. This is the uterosacral right one cut by ligature. And here we can decide the situation with the rectum. It is obvious here that you see the specimen, you know, totally detached and attached to the rectum only. And here we see that um, the Douglas's pouch and the infiltration of the bowel. Now we try to detach the tumor from, from the rectum. And if it's possible to, to achieve complete resection, complete gross resection without 
and bowel resection, it's, it's good. Not always possible, but sometimes it's possible. We will try. We we'll always try to spare as much bowel as, as possible. There is a, we hope that we can, you know, strip away the affected peritoneum from the bowel because I feel that there is no direct invasion and we will be able to shave the rectum. go oppositely and trying to shave from the down to the top some Bleeders in the mesorectum are coagulated. And now we strip the tumor from the anterior rectal wall from the opposite side. It's easy because everything is uh, mobilized and we bring everything in front of us and we see everything well. Here we see that we almost, you know, were able to spare the rectosigmoid. Without segmental resection. Any microscopic disease should be removed. Okay, here we see that the old macroscopic disease is resected. There might be some small uh, residuals which will be removed separately. Now we check for any additional 
disease, we'll find some disease on the appendix. The appendix is uh, removed also. It's doubly clipped and removed by a ligature. Okay. Looks like we were able to achieve complete course resection in this case. It is important in this patient because she is she has a low grade tumor and the expectations from the surgery are very high. And it was very, very important in this lady to achieve complete gross resection. Due to the shaving, we have some defect on the muscularis of the proximal rectum and distal sigmoid. And the muscularis is restored by series of uh, the interrupted uh, trio observable sutures. You see the defect. We put a cu couple of uh, stain sutures on the left and right sides of this defect and then we will close it. The closure of the defect of muscularis is important to avoid the potential uh, rectovaginal fistulas in the post-op period, especially in patients who will get the pelicism up.
Okay. Now it's closed. The cargo and the small leaders. We resect the piece of the vagina. To avoid large uh, tissue stumps. And finally, we check uh, the safety of our procedure, <coughs> which is a very important part at the end of any surgery. We insert the uh, rectal probe to make sure that there is no any laceration which could be missed during the save, shaving, shaving of the bowel or during the manipulation. We check the integrity of the bowel, we check the you know, quality of uh, our suture line. We want to make sure that the muscularis is okay. There is no laceration of the muscularis that should be closed. Again, in the patients who is, you know, underwent the adjuvant chemo and bevacizumab, it is important. It's a bit different from from you know, other procedures. Okay, we check the integrity well, by uh, rectal probe. Now we, you know, close the proximal uh, bowel and inject uh, the uh, betadine. And do the bub bubble test. We see the better than test is negative. There is no any small hole. Otherwise, we, we will see the better than leaking away uh, from the bowel. We can use uh, the blue dye also for this, but we prefer to use the better dye. Here we see that there is no better dye leak. Well, the bowel is okay. And at least we perform the bubble test also of course this is not the case we don't have any anastomosis but it works to invest a, a little bit time 
of your time to check, to perform those all those safety check procedures. The bubble test is negative also. The Foley catheter left inside the rectum for two or three days to decompress. And the integrity of the urinary bladder is checked also. We will inject the bladder with the blue dye. Because the, it, it's, it's not easy to estimate the integrity of the detrusor on the empty bladder. And sometimes you feel in the bladder and you see that there are some, you know, lacerations and uh, it's good to, to close them to avoid the vesicle vaginal fistulas in your post-operative period. 